Yo. Um, I know before I've done a video on here about what setup, what lure, what line, what reel, all that sort of stuff. But today I wanted to do a video purely focusing on lures because I get that question constantly. What are the your top? Is someone here? No. What's your top 10 best JT lures? So I figured that's a pretty good question and it's a probably a good thing that can help you guys um, down the track with your fishing and what lures to buy when you want to <clears throat> fork out the coin and buy some. So also I guess it's pretty important to talk about hooks as well so let's get into it mate. These are the ones that I've kind of been using lately or new ones that I've got and haven't really used yet. For me it's really important to be like mentally satisfied with what you're throwing so I get bored pretty quickly if I'm throwing a lure and it's not hooking up and or the fish aren't really on I get bored and want to change things up so I have like a few that will keep me mentally entertained in those times where it's not that good if that makes sense it probably sounds really mental but that's just how my brain works even though it's weird I reckon the most important thing is to have like a couple of lures to cover all bases so for instance you have like two poppers you have a couple of floating stick baits and you have a couple of sinking stick baits obviously you use them according to the conditions at hand and what the fish are after my battery's gonna die no battery in okay so the last few GT trips I've been on I've kind of had this trend going on where I've purely thrown poppers and that's purely because they've been working so when I first get to a spot if it looks good with current bait or whatever I'll cast a popper generally that's been working for me I tend to go to a spot fish it if it's you're not seeing a fish or raising a fish within the first 10 casts they're probably not there so move on but in the situation that you raise a fish it hits your lure doesn't hook up it disappears then if there's not many other spots in your zone i'd change to a stick bait to try and get that bite and show i'm something different so for instance on the last trip i was on i was throwing this blaze garage sand 120 gram really good popper for its weight it holds really big hooks and um Raise the fish, no hook up, so I changed to, where is it, where is it, hold on, I'm going to find it, I changed to this, big new pop teardrop floater, I didn't get the GT, but a massive trout ate it, so when nothing was happening on the popper, after I missed that opportunity, changed to a stick bait, it can be floating, or it can be, Sinking, like that. Sinking stick bait, obviously really good when it's um, choppy conditions and you want your lure to be in the zone and staying in the water. But generally, the trend I'm on at the moment, just because it's been working, has been to throw poppers. Obviously, that's not always the case. It seems like on those um, like rocky islands up north and on the reef, the poppers are really good. But I know like fishing those like more shoaly reefs in in southern Queensland that it can shut down because you're peppering the same zone all day so that's when the stick bait really comes in what next I guess what to buy if you're wanting to buy lures if you're starting out I think the most important thing is to obviously if you're starting out and you're not really fishing that much you don't want to spend a shitload of money so there's a few options out there that are cheap and good so FCL for one, I think they're like $50, $60. Really good quality lure and they're cheap. Another one that the Buster and that are selling is the Pop 2 Drop. I think they're like 50 bucks or something. And this is a really good popper. Cast really good. Obviously hooks up. She's been chewed on. And what else is cheap and good? Good question. Oh, the Heru range, like the Heru Skipjack, you would have seen that in a few of my videos before. Heru Skipjack I bought yesterday, 150. Big. Very, very good lure. I don't have any at the moment because they always get eaten and snapped off. Yep. 
But yeah, that's another one that's really cheap and really good. Also the Heru Wahoo, which is uh, like a slow sinking stick bait, also very good. Um, so that's worth a look. I know FCL, go to Fishhead website, they've got them. Heru Ebb Tide Tackle, they've got them. Pop to drop ones that the Buster and that are doing uh, on their Pop to drop website. Or maybe the cast website, I don't know. And then, obviously from there, if you're getting a bit more into it and you want to spend a bit more money, mate, there's a whole shitload of sick lures and this is where the mental boredom game comes into it for me. Because it's like I want to throw something that looks really mental that maybe no one else has thrown there before and it's special lure that the fish haven't ever seen before. So this is where it comes into like the more mental side. Oh, again on the cheaper lures. Sorry, Tristan. But there's the missing at sea ones as well. Really good. Big popper. Yeah, so that more expensive stuff. This is where it becomes more like a wank collector bullshit. And I know there's people that buy friggin' carpenter lures and they have a hundred of them in the house and they've never even thrown them in the water, which pisses me off. But anyway, I won't get into that. You can see here with like, look at that. Like, are you kidding me? Look at that thing. That's a jack fin. Um, what is it? Argo 240, I think it is. Amazing colors. That's the other one that I've got at the moment. I've had a lot of fish on these before. Really sick. Um, so yeah, floating. The poppers I've been using in that sort of thing are, like I said recently, I just got these, the Blaze Garage. Um, very, very good, just purely because for a lure that's only 120 grams, it holds big hooks. So I've been running six of BKK trebles on that. Look at that. The new Blaze Garage, mate. She's doing it. You could probably even go bigger, I don't know. Otherwise, of course, there's OTL that I've caught a lot of fish on before. Um, handmade by Mike in New Zealand. He's a legend and the action on these is like as good as any lure I've ever seen. And they work, so... Mikey's pretty onto it, and yeah, handmade, small, one-man band, so that's probably worth supporting. Mike also does poppers as well, he did this custom fusy colour for me. Pretty sick. What else? Sea Falcon, again, they're available at Fishhead. I think the jack fins are available at Ebb Tide, but yeah, it's just all trying to, when you're starting out, finding a couple of lures that'll work for you. And as you get more and more into it, that's when all this other shit comes in. Yeah, I'm babbling on here and it's probably getting really boring. And there's no fishing in this video, which is also probably really boring, but hopefully some of you will find this interesting. Starting GT fishing. Popper. Maybe two poppers. We've got two poppers when you're first starting. We have a floating stick boat. Maybe a big one like that, and a small one like that, and then a couple of sinkers. Sinking stick bait. Sinking stick bait. Something like that. You got two of each, you lose one, you can change, and yeah, that's what you want. I always run a, it's another question I get asked a lot is what? Not the tie, I've probably covered this before, but I'll cover it again just so everyone is on the same page. On the front of my my front toe point, I run a split ring to a swivel and then a really simple four turn uni knot. I know some people double up their uni knot, so it's wrapped around the swivel twice before they tie it, which just gives you extra strength, but I generally don't really bother. Probably lose the biggest fish of my life because of that, but when that comes to it, we'll cross that bridge. Hooks. Okay, hooks. When I'm fishing for GTs, that's a 6.0 BKK, totally barbless. I know barbless, the idea of a barbless hook is kind of weird because you think, oh fuck, I'll lose every fish that I hook. But if you keep the pressure on these fish, don't give them slack line, the hooks will stay in. It's the main thing for that is, there's two things for that. I don't want to say one's more important than the other because it'll piss someone off, but 
your own safety and the people fishing around you is very important barbless hooks if you cast and you hook someone in the head with a massive barb or you get it in your hand or whatever you can't get the fucking thing out barbless it's going to hurt still but it's going to come straight out which is super 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 important and obviously the other point is the fish barbs you're ripping the hooks out and it's going to do more damage i'll show you a clip now of barbless hook Watch this. That's, your thro that's the throwaway you're getting. You throw away the lure. Man. You push it out, comes straight out. A lot less damage to the fish. When I'm using a popper, I'm running it like this. Pretty always on a popper, just because I feel that two trebles holds the lure in the water better. So that's how I run my poppers. Double tread. With two trebles, you've got more of a chance of bending the hook. And people say you're damaging the fish, you only need singles. But with singles on, a, on some poppers, it'll skip out a lot more. So that's why I use two trebles to hold it in. Um, on a stick bait, a floating stick bait and sinking stick baits, I run a setup like this. Belly treb, tail single, gives the lure a better action. You can obviously run two singles if you want, you can run two trebles if you want, but in my experience that gives the lure the best action that the lure can get. Obviously some lures are different than others, but the ones I use, and I know those pop two drops, the OTLs, those sort of floating stick baits, really good with that configuration, mate. Another lure that's really cool, and I get asked about a lot because it's really hard to, they're very hard to get, is this one. The Siren, Deep Seductress, really sick lure. I'm lucky enough to be able to get them from the source, from Jason. And these things are like gold. They're indestructible. The finish is incredible and they're strong as hell. I know like in America, they use them a lot for big bluefin tuna, but I've caught GTs on them. I've caught Spanish mackerel. I've caught long tails on them here as well. So. They're really good, strong lure and super fast sinking. Really good. I think if you want to get your hands on one of these, it's quite difficult, but if you keep peppering um, salty water tackle in the US, when they have a new batch, you want to be real quick, but you can get them. So if you can, it's definitely worth it because they're a sick lure. Obviously another thing here, back to hooks, is not all hooks come barbless. So. I've got the shittest pliers in the world at the moment, but I'll try and demonstrate for you, even though it probably won't work. But it'll give you an idea. You get your pliers. These are really good for opening split rings, but not very good for crushing barbs. Tripod's pretty doggers at the moment. You hook, get your barb in there, and you squash the shit out of it. And I just broke my pliers. Obviously, bigger pliers a lot better. See that hook has quite a barb on it. And basically, the aim of the game is to squash that barb flat with the rest of the hook. And that will turn it into a relatively barbless hook. It still has a small lump there, but it's better than having that massive barb there. So, there you go. This actually is pretty cool. This little thing. That, I pulled out of a GT's head that I caught. So that's an old hook. Someone had hooked this fish before and got dusted out on the reef. And this fish had one eye. I'll show you now. His eye's gone. Boy, I need a photo of this steezy GT. Man. One of its eyes was cooked and it had that little bit of hook sticking out of its face. So that's another thing. Barbless, I had a few people whinging at me in the shark video about getting snapped off and keeping on fishing for sharks and leaving hooks in them, but that's a, the other thing with barbless is once that line goes slack, if they bust you off or something, they can get rid of the hook really easily. So that's super important and um, it's just responsible fishing. Yeah, so that's really brief, weird, probably all over the place discussion. I had a few beers last night, so my brain's not really working too well, but hopefully that 
has given you guys a bit of an idea of the kind of thing that you might need if you want to get into GT fishing or if you're already into GT fishing, a few new ideas for lures and that sort of thing. So one more thing is along with the hook side of things is obviously you can have hooks on certain lures that are too big or too small and it'll affect the action or sink a popper if the hooks are too big. So don't be afraid to, if you try a lure and it's not working and you think, oh, this lure's a heap of shit, change the hook configuration, change the size, change up how you've got it and it'll make the action different. Because obviously people put a lot of time into making these lures and they're obviously not gonna sell them ultimately if they don't swim. So you might have to tweak your settings and your hooks, maybe even your leader in some circumstances to make um, these lures work the way that they are meant to work. And in saying that, there's some lures that you think are a great GT lure. For instance, this isn't riding them off at all, but this is a Sea Falcon something or other. Really sick looking lure, but this is a tuna lure ultimately so you can't this lure can't handle those big hooks for gts so it's a bit scary throwing this for gts and the action on this is a lot tighter whereas a lot of those traditional gt stick baits it's a wider action does that make sense probably not um but yeah that's something to be aware of your hook size and to be really confident when you're fishing for gts your hook size and strength is very important. So I think that sort of 6-0 size is really good and that's kind of what I try and ta tailor my lures that I'm throwing in those zones for big GTs to be able to handle that size hook. If I'm throwing a smaller lure that can't handle those big hooks, I feel a bit more worried. If you guys like this video and you find it quite interesting, comment below and let me know and we can do this with light tackle stuff, we can do it for jigging, we can do it for all that other stuff as well. Sorry I haven't posted in a while, I'm trying to get the YouTube thing happening again whilst doing fish flicks as well, so um, I had a, I've had a few hecklers like writing me off for doing fish flicks, but at the end of the day, like I'm trying to do this for work now, the, the fishing thing. I've, I'm doing the fish flicks thing, it's going really good, and it's allowing me to do a whole heap of different stuff I wouldn't have been able to do but I still want to give you guys on YouTube um, an insight into what's going on and still make some videos for you guys so I'm gonna start knuckling down and working a bit harder to keep both pumping thanks for watching I hope you found this slightly beneficial or interesting to a degree and um, yeah I got a pretty cool little um, collab video with a certain Jimmy coming real soon See you soon. You.